Hello everyone, uh, this is Rashid Firoz and today I'm going to talk about how we can achieve a high level of network inspection using VPC traffic mirroring, which is a feature provided by AWS along with Suricata and Zeek. So Suricata and Zeek are open source network security monitoring tools, which are very well known in the market and VPC traffic mirroring is a feature provided by AWS. Now uh, to give a context before we begin this talk, even though uh, the architecture that we have uh, will be showing in the presentation is using VPC traffic mirroring, which is a feature provided by AWS. But uh, this whole setup can be cloud agnostic as well, irrespective of whether you are uh, on AWS or Azure or GCP or uh, on your own data center. Moving ahead, <clears throat> so this is uh, about me. I'm working as a security engineer at CRED and uh, I've been into cloud security since a long time. Uh, before that, I worked as a security consultant for multiple banks, financial entities, and government agencies across the globe. So this was about me. Coming to the agenda of the talk. So this is the agenda of the talk uh, of, for the session. And we'll start with the problem statements that we have faced. And while trying to solve those problem statements, there are certain very specific pain points using a traditional approach that we will be talking about. Uh, and then uh, I'll talk about uh, VPC traffic mirroring, and then uh, we'll go into the implementation architecture. Then we'll talk about why uh, we have chosen Suricata and Zeek, uh, and then we will conclude the whole talk. So uh, these are the problems we started facing since last uh, one year, ever since COVID happened, uh, the complete workforce for every organization started working from home. And the only way for them to connect to the office infrastructure is through VPN. Now, uh, VPN has to be kept in a public subnet or in a DMZ. So uh, VPN becomes a key target for attackers since the only way inside to the infrastructure is now via VPN. So uh, what we have seen <laughs> is that uh, companies and organizations spend uh, many resources and, uh, uh, and integrate commercial appliances uh, and firewalls, DDoS protection for the perimeter security. Uh, but when it comes to uh, detecting threats on the internal network, I guess uh, we are still lacking because it's kind of difficult to set up infrastructure to detect internal threats, uh, which we will discuss about. So the major pain points that we have is that uh, there is a lack of visibility over internal traffic and lock, lack of visibility over VPN traffic as well. So in the last year, 2020 and 2021, we have seen many, uh, many attacks happening on VPN instance, and uh, there were zero days seen in the wild as well. For example, uh, in the US federal agencies, uh, VPN got hacked and they got access, attackers got access to the internal network. And then there were Citrix vulnerabilities seen in the wild, which was a zero day at that time. So uh, coming to the next slide, these are some of the screenshots uh, where you can clearly see in uh, since last uh, one and a half year, there has been increasing number of attacks on the VPNs in almost across every industry. So uh, <coughs> I'll talk a bit about uh, when you approach this problem statement and try to solve it using uh, a traditional solution, what kind of pain points you might encounter. So the first thing is the log growth. Uh, if you try to ingest uh, NetFlow logs or your network logs into a same solution, the log growth is huge even for a small scale, small scale organization. Now ingesting all those network logs into a uh, log analysis tool or same solution will not always be feasible, especially for a small to medium scale organization because we're talking about huge uh, uh, log flow and uh, it could easily go into terabytes or petabytes. So we have multiple uh, issues that we have faced. For example, uh, correlation and analysis of such huge data sets is a nightmare, especially for small security teams. So uh, the uh, let's say if an incident happens, the typical response is to uh, do a threat hunting or try to analyze uh, what happened by analyzing the network logs. And uh, when an event happens, if you try to analyze 
terabytes and terabytes of uh, flow logs or network logs, it would be kind of very difficult or almost impossible to find out in a short period of time uh, as what exactly has happened. Because uh, VPC flow logs generates multiple log, log lines for simple packet transmission. Even for a TCP uh, handshake, it will generate uh, one or two uh, log lines. So uh, this is a meme that I made, and it stands very, very true for, uh, again, small to mid-scale organizations where the security team is small and uh, the log growth is huge. So uh, let's say if you want to do a log analysis uh, from your last 30 days, we are easily uh, considering around 30 to 50 terabytes of data. And again, one terabyte per day is an assumption I have taken for a small scale organization. It can be less or even much more depending on your organization and network traffic size. So this is, can be a very daunting task for uh, SOC analysts or, or people who uh, implement SIM into their org to do such uh, correlation and analysis on such huge data set because there are uh, the, 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 because the scaling challenge is huge. In order to scale uh, your SIM solution or log analysis tool to such huge scale is a daunting task. And then you have a uh, cost problem when it comes to commercial SIM solutions ingesting such huge data. And then you have resource crunches. Uh, so there are a lot of issues when it comes to uh, doing threat hunting or detecting threats via uh, analyzing network logs. So the question which comes to our mind is, is there a solution which can give us deeper network visibility and help us to detect threats within our internal infrastructure with a minimal and easy to use setup? So here is the solution, introducing VPC traffic mirroring along with Suricata and Zeek. Again, VPC traffic mirroring is a feature provided by AWS, which we will talk about. And Suricata uh, or Zeek are open source network security monitoring tools available in the market. Before we go ahead, let's first understand what is VPC traffic mirroring. So VPC traffic mirroring is a feature provided by AWS using which we can copy network traffic from an uh, uh, elastic network interface of an Amazon EC2 instance to a destination. The destination could be an EC2, destination could be a load balancer, et cetera. Now there are three main key elements of VPC traffic mirroring. One is source, another one is uh, filter, another one is the target or the destination. So if you see in the picture uh, below, the source A on the left side is actually sending the mirror traffic to target B. So how it works is whatever traffic is flowing through source A, whether incoming or outgoing, what VPC traffic mirroring will do, it will copy the exact traffic, encapsulate the whole traffic into VXLAN packets, which is an encapsulation protocol and send that traffic onto uh, a target D, which is our uh, mirroring target. And target D could be running these tools, for example, Suricata and Z. So they could be multiple sources and multiple destinations in this process. So uh, let's talk a bit about how the whole thing works. This is a very simplistic architecture that uh, uh, I've shown here. Uh, it might not be this simple in a real-time scenario. This for the sake of understanding. On the left side, this is the uh, source, and uh, in the middle, this is the destination for VPC traffic mirroring. So let's say we want to monitor certain uh, network interface or certain instances. So we will uh, implement this VPC traffic mirroring where we will choose uh, those instances or those load balancer as a source, and then VPC traffic mirroring will forward all that traffic to a particular instance or a load balancer of our choice. And on that particular machine, we'll be running our uh, NSM tools. So these NSM tools will generate some logs, which we will be pushing into Elasticsearch, or you can push it to your favorite same solution or uh, log analysis tool, which is used in your organization. So coming to why uh, do we uh, even use Suricata, what advantages it has, so it is a very powerful open source network security monitoring tool, and uh, it has uh, capabilities of scaling and uh, uh, high performance where it can uh, handle uh, gigabits of data uh, per second very easily. So the way Suricata works, it listen, listens to that interface 
Uh, so uh, on that interface, the VPC traffic uh, from the source is getting mirrored to destination. And uh, Suricata is uh, trying to listen to that interface, capturing all the packets. And on the fly, it does all the decoding and parsing job for you. So you don't have to figure out exactly what protocol is in use, uh, if what files are being transferred. It will do all those things for you. So all the application layer decoding, uh, protocol layer decoding, it will do it for you and generate the logs. Another very important and interesting feature Suricata has that uh, by default, it supports tunnel decoding, which is uh, VXLAN or GRE. So VXLAN is an encapsulation protocol used by AWS for VPC traffic mirroring. So when you mirror the traffic from the source to destination, AWS encapsulates it in a VXLAN uh, protocol and then forwards the traffic to the destination. So Suricata has this support for automatic uh, uh, VXLAN decoding uh, so that the source and the destination IP will always be the same as what it is seen in the source. So uh, it also has a HTTP parser, which can parse your HTTP request and analyze uh, all the HTTP headers and uh, get requests. Then uh, you can also extract files transferred over your network using Suricata. Let's say if somebody is trying to download a malware via your network, internal network, what Suricata can do is that it will identify that a file is being transferred. So it will uh, save all those packets associated with that file and generate the filing system itself, which you can forward to a sandbox for further malware analysis. So this Suricata works on a rule-based uh, alerting engine uh, where the rules are written to detect any sort of anomalies. So by default, open source rules are available, but you can also use commercial Suricata rule sets of, uh, from the market, which will be paid. So uh, the way it detection logic works is you can write a Lua script and it's kind of very easy to write your own custom scripts uh, for detection. And you can even use MISP uh, to uh, match the IOCs against your DNS request or URI or other fields. The best part about this is that it generates the output in JSON. So you can easily pick up the JSON output and feed into your Elasticsearch or uh, the your, whatever same solution that we are using for visualization and alerting. So coming to the next part, which is uh, why do we want to use Zeek? So Suricata and Zeek are two different tools and both, sub, uh, both are categorized as network security monitoring, but there's a primary difference between Suricata and Zeek. Suricata is primarily a signature-based detection tool, but Zeek is more of a, a very powerful network analyzer so what it does, it converts all the traffic captured via Zeek into a series of events. For example, let's say if I'm transferring 100 uh, megabytes from a social destination within my internal traffic, what Zeek will do is that instead of generating 1,000 log lines, as you would see in VPC logs, what Zeek will do, it will combine all those packets into one simple log line. That This is the source, this is destination, and this guy uh, actually mm -hmm. transferred 100 MB over your network. So you can send a Zeek output uh, to your Elasticsearch or your same solution. Uh, and it is very intuitive and very simple and condensed form of, uh, I would say, uh, flow logs, uh, which can be used for threat hunting. So it gives you a more perspective. It, it, it's more easy to do an analysis and it's more easy to piece together what's happening in my network. So how have we solved for this? We have used VPC traffic mirroring in AWS to forward traffic from our VPN uh, to the chosen destination. Now, Suricata and Zeek works independently and they consume the mirror traffic. So Suricata, sorry, the Suricata analyzes the network traffic and detects any attack patterns or signatures that could signify a network intrusion. So whenever the traffic matches with any attack patterns, which is defined in the Suricata rules, uh, then it uh, raises an alarm. So Zeek does not generate alerts on its own. Zeek uh, uh, captures all the um, traffic and generates key insights on those traffic. As for example, let's say if you capture 24 hour traffic using Zeek, it will generate uh, logs for every single protocol, SSH, uh, uh, SMB, SNMP, or just the connection logs. So it's easier to uh, go through Zeek logs 
than uh, comparing to network log. Now uh, you can use file based for log stash to forward the uh, log generated by Suricata and Zeek, which is in JSON, to forward it to your uh, Elastic cluster for mm -hmm. visualization and analytics purpose. So this is more of a realistic architecture that you might implement in your organization. Again, it depends uh, how it is set up. So if you see uh, on the left side, we have an instance T3, uh, where uh, which is the VPN server that we're using and it is in a DMG zone. So employees will be connecting to this VPN server. So uh, what uh, you can do is you can use VPC traffic mirroring to forward or mirror the traffic from a VPN server to a chosen destination. And your destination could be an EC2 instance or a load balancer. In our case, here it's a network load balancer, just forwarding the traffic to Suricata instances. The Suricata has their own rule engine, which detect attacks by analyzing the traffic. And then using file bait, you send uh, the logs generated by Suricata to Logstash and then to uh, Elastic Cluster. So uh, what are the use cases? So the use cases could be that uh, one is that it detects attacks of the VPN instance from outside, and then it can also detect malicious traffic flowing through VPN. Let's say if uh, some employee gets compromised and the attacker is trying to uh, enumerate our resources through VPN or uh, trying to do some attacks via VPN traffic, then we uh, would be able to detect that using this setup. It might also detect zero day attacks on the VPN instance because uh, if uh, the, uh, the payloads are not encrypted, uh, we can easily see that somebody is trying to do some attacks on a VPN instance. And using Zeek, you can do another uh, ton of things. For example, you can detect any mass data extraction from your system. Uh, and using Zeek, it can even uh, generate even logs, which you can consume for threat hunting. So uh, <laughs> the way I see it as working is, uh, let's say in your whole environment, there are certain very key instances where you process and store uh, sensitive data. So what you can do instead of uh, capturing uh, the whole uh, traffic, you can capture, you can use VPC traffic mirroring to uh, the, mirror the traffic from those key instances or those key load balancers and then forward it to uh, a Suricata or Z cluster and then uh, so uh, that will give you a, a better understanding of what's happening in your network. So it's easier to make sense uh, uh, what's happening in your network if you use such tools. So these are some of the alerts generated using Suricata. The first one, if you see, it's a Netgear remote command execution as detected uh, by the signature in Suricata. And uh, uh, this attack has come from China where somebody is trying to uh, uh, do a remote com command execution. Uh, if this succeeds, the attacker might get a reverse shell, which is detected by Suricata. And then on the bottom, you will see uh, different uh, alert signatures detected by Suricata. And what is the IP? What is the location? What exactly, what category it falls into? So uh, <clears throat> this is a just a, uh, a visualization of what uh, Suricata is capable to do. Again, uh, uh, it works on the signature that you have defined, the rules that you have defined within Suricata. So if the rules, uh, if there is an attack which does not matches the rules, then Suricata might not detect that. Coming to Zeek. So by default, Zeek uh, do not generate, does not generate any of the connection logs, I mean, uh, alert events. So by default, Zeek does not generate alerts as compared to Suricata, but it generates log files after analyzing all the network packets. So you can consume those log files and build your own use cases. So your use case might vary from my use case, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So here is one of the use cases uh, that uh, we have achieved using uh, parsing Zeek logs, and that is mass data extraction using VPN. So if any employee is trying to uh, extract uh, mass data, you can define what do you mean by mass data? It could be greater than 100 MB or it could be greater than 500 MB uh, from your VPN instance. Then uh, I will immediately get an alert. So this person from this IP address is has uh, extracted uh, this 100 MB of data. 
And when you see recent data breaches where terabytes and terabytes of data were leaked from the uh, systems or, uh, or data warehouses. So this can be very useful when it comes to detect, uh, detecting any sort of mass data extraction. Now it could be legit employee or uh, it could be an attacker as well. So what are the limitations? So uh, for sure, uh, uh, Suricata can't detect attacks on uh, encrypted channels because it's not possible to read what's happening on encrypted channels. But again, it depends how your setup is and where you are trying to listen to the traffic. A lot of times what I've seen in many organizations is that the SSL connection ends at the load balancer itself. And after the load balancer, the traffic flows in HTTP. Again, it depends how your organization has set up the whole infrastructure. Now, if you listen, uh, tap onto the traffic, which is uh, moving in within your infrastructure after the load balancer, then we can easily figure out uh, what attacks are happening on your network. But again, even, even if your internal uh, uh, traffic is encrypted, it will be difficult to detect attacks but it can give you key insights of what IP is trying to do what. So there are certain alternatives to VPC traffic mirroring if you're not on AWS. Uh, if you're on GCP, you can use packet mirroring, uh, which gives you the same abilities. If you're on Azure, you can use virtual network tap. If you're not on GCP and Azure, if you're on a custom DC, you can always use port mirroring and span for achieving the same as what we have done. So uh, uh, coming to the conclusion, the uh, so what uh, we just talked about in this session is that uh, we uh, generally organizations tend to focus a lot more on the external uh, angle from a, from a perimeter security angle. We might put firewalls and 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 different appliances uh, on the perimeter, but generally it becomes very difficult to get a uh, overall bird's eye view on what's happening in your internal network. And in order to do that, what, what is the general practice is that uh, security teams tend to consume all the network logs into a same solution. But when the log size is very, very huge, it goes into terabytes and petabytes, it gets very difficult, especially for small and medium security teams to ingest those logs. Uh, into a into a log analysis tool from a scalability perspective or cost perspective or resource perspective and get make some sense out of it. So what we have done here is that using Suricata, Zeek and traffic mirroring, you can uh, get a sense of what's happening in your network, detect easily detect anomalies uh, and also generate more uh, eventful or stateful uh, network logs using Zeek. So I'm not saying uh, that you should not uh, use network flow logs for threat hunting, or you should not ingest network flow logs into your SIM. Even we ingest VPC flow logs from AWS to uh, our SIM solution uh, because it serves for certain use cases. So I'm not saying it's, it's a bad practice to ingest network logs into your SIM solution. But if you want to uh, have an easy to use setup with a minimal infrastructure, then this is something you can easily uh, configure within a day or so. That what it was about. Thank you uh, for attending the session. Uh, so thank you, Rashid. That was very informative. Is there anything you would like to add on to that talk or uh, you know, um, any updates that uh, you all have made in the architecture, any changes? Uh, Anusha, I don't think we have made any changes, but I would want to talk in generic in general about traffic mirroring, uh, uh, right? Uh, so uh, there are a lot of other use cases I have seen uh, in the last one year uh, using traffic mirroring. So uh, what I discussed in the talk was majorly around how to get more insights, how to detect security threats, right? Uh, using Suricata and Zeek. Uh, uh, one of the most interesting thing we did was we had a lack of visibility on who's extracting uh, data from our environment and using Zeek, uh, we got to know that basically which employee, it could be an employee or the employee might be compromised. Uh, so what employees downloading, uh, what amount of data in MBs or gigabytes 
uh, from our uh, data stores. So given that we already have very strict access control measures, uh, but still uh, there could be some uh, non-confidential data which might be important to us as well, or uh, it could be some sort of confidential, confidential data as well. So that is that has served the purpose really well. We have great visibility on uh, who is doing what in terms of data extraction. Other use cases I would want to talk about is I have seen this use case in forensics as well. For example, if an instance is compromised and an instance is trying to communicate to a command and control server, uh, right, on a, on a traditional ransomware or a, a botnet architecture, and you want to analyze the traffic which is uh, flowing from the instance you can isolate the instance, uh, remove it from the production, and you can implement traffic mirroring, and you can analyze the traffic without logging into the instance. Because a lot of times you might not have access to the instance because of some uh, reason, and uh, traffic mirroring would give you some insights as what uh, that, that specific malware or bot is exactly trying to do. That is one use case that I found uh, to be useful. Another use case I would want to talk about is I've seen a lot of uh, uh, products, security products also using traffic mirroring right now. For example, uh, uh, we were trying to evaluate an API security product. So a lot of times, uh, uh, especially in smaller companies, uh, there could be some API changes uh, being uh, made uh, go live without notifying security teams as it could be a very minor change or uh, there could be some reason to go live uh, without notifying security teams and uh, but for us it might cause security lapses so we wanted to basically make sure that any minor changes which is happening in the api should not escape our eyes and we were trying to evaluate uh, a security product which gives you any changes which is happening on the api uh, structure so uh, interestingly what this api product does is it uses traffic mirroring to ingest traffic from your CloudFront to ELB, where all the ingress traffic comes, our traffic comes, and figures out by uh, checking the uh, uh, parameters, URL parameters, if there is any new API, uh, which uh, they can add into the database and notify us if we already don't know about it. So this is one another interesting use case. Again, it's not the best way to solve for this problem, but uh, uh, traffic mirroring can be applied uh, in all these different use cases to serve your purposes. So yeah, I think that's what I wanted to convey that apart from uh, getting insights on network, uh, traffic mirroring can be used in other use cases as well.